Hi everyone, it's Madge here with amazingly, deliciously gorgeous fashion slurry. We know this because we're not on video, so it's very easy. <laughs> and this time this. I put on a full face of makeup. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. And we have the uh, we have fashion is going to introduce our guest who is absolutely amazing, somebody we've been waiting for weeks. Very excited to talk to you. So I will let Fashion Slurry do the introduction. Well, I'm glad we didn't talk to her earlier because then it would have meant she would have been out of the race oh. earlier. But we have Jenny of Janae Jackie. Oh, I always fuck up your name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Try again. Okay. Okay, here okay. we go. And here we have Janie Jackie. And I'm probably fucking that up again. I think it's Janie, <laughs> I think it's Janie Jackie. Janie Jackie, you're right. Yes. Oh, shit. And I was, seriously, this is the only only name I was practicing before we started because I, I keep fucking it up and I don't know why. It's better poop. Well, <laughs> I guess I have to say that my name is so original, like the OG. It's hard to it's hard to remember or to pronounce. Okay. Um, She's not married to a Spanish person, and I am, so I know how to do the accents. Uh, so, so. It, but it's really okay if if oh, if it's right. troubling for my name, just call me JJ. <laughs> that well, reminds me of it my is JJ. <laughs> <laughs> but I also read it comes from Techie. So that's why I kind of well, want to go for no, no. Jackie. It's, I'm, I'm ill-informed. Because of the accent or the E and everything else. But it's, uh, no, I mean, it's people make stories, I think. Um, <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> Janie is just a sweet, a cute side of me that that came from baby Jane. And JK is that uh, spice that I have, that like extraness. So it's not tacky, but it's more like. Extra. Extra. I think, I think a lot gets lost in translation, especially with these oh, okay. subtitles. Why baby Jane? What did you are you are you a big fan of Betty Davis or how did how did baby Jane come into this? Well, I always loved the Betty Davis and then uh, the first time I ever put on a dress um uh, uh, uh with a girlfriend of mine, her mom said to me, "Oh my god, you look like baby Jane." And then wow. I was like, "Okay, well, because that was such a first thing and and I loved that so much the reference. I was like, "Okay, I want to do something with that, but not too literal." Yeah. So then I made it J Nee. So the the reference is still there, but it I made it my own. I, I I think you're far too beautiful to be baby Jane, but I love baby Jane. I mean she was she was tech. Oh, but I don't think you're working. First time I was in drag. Oh, you used to you used to have a different aesthetic, maybe. Well, I the first time in everybody's in drag is just not pretty, I guess. Right. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time ago. It's like ten years ago. Some of us just never changed. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, Madge, you're stunning too. I'm ugly as hell, but I'm not a drag queen. I'm just a lesbian, so I don't oh, have yeah, to be true. pretty. You know? um, I, I wanted to ask, this is also from your um, wiki, but somebody said, I just thought it was an interesting way to phrase it. They said, you were first put into drag at 16. And that's a strange way to, th that makes it sound like it wasn't, it was against your own free will. Like, were you... Did your grandfather like put you in a dress and beat you or something? I mean, what, is, what is that? <laughs> no, mean? I mean, I, I really wanted to be a drag queen, I guess, uh -huh. at that age. And um, I just asked another drag queen to help me out. So oh, I, I think that's what they mean when they when they say that I was put into drag by somebody else. <laughs> I didn't do it myself necessarily. <laughs> okay, so my it does sound funny though. <laughs> yeah. Sounds very abusive. So you you were kind. I, I get the impression you've always wanted to be a drag queen since it's kind of like your destiny. Am I right? Yeah, I remember. Um, I went. I, I went, I'm, a, I'm from a very small village, and I started going to school in Amsterdam sure when I was twelve. So that's also when I started to see like gay scene and and that uh, happening around me. And I saw uh, videos of RuPaul, and we had a, a very old drag show on television in the Netherlands years and years and years ago. And I saw some material from that, and. Um, in the back of my mind, I was always like, oh, my God, if I can make a job out of lip syncing on a stage, dressed as a woman, yeah. um, I was like, oh, my God, it would be phenomenal. And and when I was 15, I was traveling uh, back of syncing my life. Like, people look at me like funny, but I was like, no, bitch, this is my life. <laughs> this is going to happen. So, and, yeah, I guess I've always wanted it to do it. And then um, eventually I just made a choice to, to go for it. Uh -huh. And then. Did you also always want to be a stinkur, or was that something that just came up later? 
<laughs> I mean, that just happened. You know, that's the same as JK. How to describe it? It's just I'm I'm too much. I'm in your face. I'm out there. I'm real. Um, um, I I'm not hateful, but I'm in your face. So yeah. Shinko just it just happened. But I guess it's the same way of saying bitch to each other. Right. Um, which is more relatable in English. That's also how we talk to each other in Dutch, but we have different words, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, such a good word, though. It, it's it's yeah. a wonderful word. I just, it was one of my favorite moments from the show. Is a stink <laughs> whore more, is that worse than a cut, cut wife, or were they about the same level? Because as a foreigner, I'm trying, I'm only really interested in I think it. it's, um, I think it's in the same level. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever heard of- <laughs> no, I think it's at the same level. I think it. I think it comes into the same region of of like uh, uh, like the bitch. But then you know we have so many different words in Dutch. The I same things. Was, I thought it was great the way you you both just you were starting to get in a really heated argument. I'm thinking, oh, these bitches are going to hate each other. And then as soon as you say, "Call me a stink whore," he called you a st- or she called you a stink whore, and then and then that's it. And that's the way it's supposed to be, I think. You're just having fun. I love that. You know, at first, I thought, this Janie is kind of a bitch. But then Fashion explained, you know, this is just, she's just being, she always was on your side. You should thank Fashion. Because she said, you know, this is just, Dutch people are always very honest and very upfront. And she's just being honest. And after I had that, understood that point of view, uh, then I I, I really started loving you. And I I never stopped. So, you know, I I just think you're, you're fantastic. I mean, that's, I think that's also like one of those things with uh, the translation and everything. It's just, we have, okay, we have the translation that is a little wonky at times, but also, uh, you know, it's a different culture here. We Mm -hmm. we are very honest people, very direct, not to be um, hateful or to to dislike people, but we like to save each other's time. And if I just say no, when you ask me a question, then you have your answer, we can move on and I can help you in a different way if I can't help you with what you're asking me. It's just, that's very Dutch culture. And then on top of that, I'm also just a very direct person. So it's like a double up of, of that. Um, but, yeah. you know, like, yeah, I, I never, I'm not trying to be hateful. I'm trying to make people better or myself better. And I appreciate when people do the same for me. And, um, and, and, I'm, and I'm happy that once you got that point of view, you love me. Yes. And that, that's what I, because I went to school in the US too, and I'm Dutch. Uh, that's what was for me a big eye opener that uh, in the US, you definitely have another way of talking to each other. Yeah. Uh, you're be- being way too polite in, in my eyes. And for Americans, we are way too direct and uh, rude uh, for some people. Right. The, Ameri- the American way is basically you t- you t- you tell them, oh, Abby, you did such a good job. You're so great. I don't know why those judges were so mean to you. And then in the confessionals, you're like, Abby's terrible. That th- neck, that thing on her neck's got to go. You know, it's totally <laughs> different. It's- yeah, I mean, and that's and that's also kind of what Abby did, you know, yeah. like mm-hmm. she she wouldn't she wouldn't give her a specific point of view until somebody would say something to her. And then all of a sudden she had all the things to say. <laughs> and then I was like, well, is that is that fair game? Is that honesty? Right. Is that? Uh, loving your sisters and trying to make them better or is that just a comeback because you feel attacked right. um, and then you know for me like I always like I love America I've been to America a couple times and, and I always enjoy performing there and I have a lot of American friends And um, but for me it's always the, the example also with Americans is like they say I love you after almost every- oh yeah yeah, it's ridiculous uh-huh. yeah my, my boss like at work I have a, a boring day job my boss tells me I love you at the end of every phone call. Oh, really? It's fucking weird. And group calls too. I'm like, this just feels wrong. You know, like Ew. you don't love me. Then what do you tell your wife? You know, <laughs> what, I, wh- where, I, where do you go from there? <laughs> oh my God. Why is it real? <laughs> you know, I was wondering too, cause I, I watched this interview you did with Valerie vision, who I, I really like her. She does some great stuff. And uh, I, you know, and she asked you something about this same issue with Abby. You said, well, I was just, you know, you were just trying, you said, Abby, you really, she can't grow without overcoming a delusion. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. you were trying to help her overcome the delusion. What, what was the delusion? Well, um, well, I mean, okay. We did uh, the gift face challenge, the second one. And you could definitely see in the group that a lot of girls really try to do something out of the box and something not necessarily away from their aesthetic, but something new and, and challenge themselves. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think the delusion for me with Abby was that she was 
during the whole like getting ready and the runway and then in like the untucked part that we do um she was very confident about her look and she was very um like open about the fact that um, she thought her look was really strong and she thought her concept was really strong and her execution was really strong. And I told her as well in the, in the well, like, let's call it a fight or discussion or whatever. I told her, like, I loved your concept. I thought it was really well thought out about like gay pride not happening and the, the crazy year that we're having. And, and uh, there's been a lot of gay attacks this year that we're really sad about. But I thought your execution was just weak. Uh, makeup wise but also like yeah. you know like how you carried the concept with the context and it just didn't make sense for me and that's how I wanted to say it and of course that was also a learning moment for me to be like okay the way I say things are just crazy right. you know I really yeah. throw it at you and and that's maybe not the best way to approach in this case Abby or other people in the world um, so that was also a learning moment for me and that's also why I decided to apologize because but I, I didn't apologize for what I said. I apologize for how I said right. it. Right, because you apologized because she said, I didn't ask for criticism. So if I want it, I'll ask. And you said, well, you're right. I should have. Well, I should have that, that came after the apology. Oh, I see. Um, and that's actually, and that's funny because like a lot of people ask me questions about the situation. And um, there's a moment where she goes, did I ask for your opinion? And you hear in the background, you hear, ooh. <laughs> and that is actually that is actually Serjin making that noise because Serjin and I have been friends for uh, I think like two years now and we've worked together a lot and she understood in that moment that what Abby did is not progressive towards better friendship or better sisterhood or mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so it's actually it, it, when I watched it I was laughing so hard because I was like oh my god that's my sister she knows what's <laughs> going on in my brain like you know, that's what's happening um so, you know, and I and I hope that it's also been a learning experience for Abby. Oh, I think so. She seems to have evolved. I mean, she certainly lasted a, a while longer than a lot of people yeah. thought she would. But that's fun. But you're all friends now, right? Yeah, of course we're friends. You know, it's like I said, it's all yeah. it all happened in the show. You know, right. me and Abby work together a lot and we work at the same agency. We see each other a lot. And um, I've always been a big fan of Abby, you know, but um, that doesn't mean that you cannot learn from each other. Right. You no, know? oh, as an artist, I think you always there's always room for improvement. Not just as an artist, there's just always room for improvement. And if you have friends that all only tell you, "Oh, you look gorgeous. You're so pretty. Oh, it's so well done," then you'll never get any further than that. So I, like uh, Madge already mentioned, I was like, "Well, I totally understand Janie because uh, how can she grow if she doesn't know?" Yeah. So, yeah. I can relate to both because I, I'm oversensitive too. And sometimes if I do a show and I get a lot of negative feedback, I start to think, oh, everybody hates me. Everybody hates me. Poor me. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 I don't know. It but is you know what, what it I, is. In time, it's like, I look at this and then, um, of course, like, you know, we compare it, of course, also to like, you know, previous drag race from America and everything. There are fights in untucked U.S. Mm -hmm. are so much more extreme than this one. Oh, yes. <laughs> and still people are blowing this up like it's the fight of the century. Right. Well, uh, we didn't have much to work with in terms it's of like, yeah. You guys yeah. got along pretty okay, well. Girls. <laughs> right. Yeah, it seemed like uh, RuPaul's best friend race because everybody was getting along well. So I understand that production would blow shit like this up because it's sort of what gets you uh, hooked on something. But there, True. Was, there was no Laganja Estranja freaking out and screaming, <laughs> which I would have loved personally if, you know, if Abby came, ran, ran out screaming and smoking, it would have been funny. But True. You know, it's also good to get along. Um, so what do you think about, um, so this idea of you being a shady queen, I, I've seen, a, what, what, can you define shady? Because maybe I'm just old, because I thought shady is somebody when you talk behind their back. Am I wrong you, here? Yeah. I, I had the same question written down. Uh, oh, man. Yes, because that's what I thought. Shady is when you're behind someone's back talking about them, right? Are but, we wrong or what's the story on that? Well, I don't No, I don't think shady is um, defined as like talking behind somebody's back. I think that's um, being like nasty or backstabbing or, um, you know, not supportive. Shady is just um, a further developed form of humor where you can buy a buy a way of a joke or buy a way of a humor mm -hmm. um, so more like a read 
something that yeah it's a read so it's it's a further further abbreviation of a read so it's like it's by saying by by, by naming jokes you sort of say the truth but because you make a joke out of it you can laugh about it but at the same time you know it's kind of the reality i see so you embrace oh. the label oh <laughs> that's good I mean, it's like, you know, like it, it, in the same in that same sense, being shady is like I acknowledge you're really great and you're perfect. But just remember, you're not perfect. And um, and be- because of that, you you stay on top of your game and you you improve yourself again. And it just for me, it's just a really fun way of humor. Like right. I enjoy that humor. Oh, I'm, I'm the same way. You enjoy every minute you're on that show, right? It sounds like that's that's where you belong. You love. I have it. to say, I really felt I was in my natural habitat yeah. doing that. <laughs> you seemed like it. Yeah. You want to go into TV, like further into television, or where do you where do you plan to take your career after this? Any thoughts? Uh, definitely, I, I already did a couple of TV shows and a big one uh, for Drag Race, and I really enjoyed that. Um, so definitely, uh, TV is one of those things that I really want to do. Um, now I'm thinking about like hosting shows or being in a judges panel again, or maybe even doing, um, dancing with the stars. Oh, wow. oh. Apparently, apparently my tango was phenomenal it was. And, <laughs> and, I, and I didn't know I could do that. So that would be something I would love to explore more. Um, and I'm a really, I'm a show queen. I love being on stage. So for me to travel together with the girls, that would be uh, amazing. Yeah. You're very much. Yeah, let's show hope. Girl. I could see you in Vegas. Oh uh, Yeah. Love to. Definitely with the last uh, uh, outfit you were wearing on uh, stage. Well, all your outfits, actually. But yeah. Thank you so much. So yeah, yeah, that's for sure traveling and doing shows a lot um, and TV. So you you probably have a suitcase that's insane. (laughs) With all the stickers. (laughs) Not necessarily with all the stickers, but with what you carry with you. Or aren't all your uh, outfits that elaborate as what we saw well yeah a lot of it is but when you travel you have to adjust that's just the case you, mm-hmm. you, you bring your little you know foldable things and your little lycra things and um you know your human wigs and not your styled stuff but um mm-hmm. if you look at my house it's literally i think my roommates are going crazy because it's literally from front to back there's stuff everywhere <laughs> where you live in amsterdam now right yes i do yeah and so you you're from fallen down i don't know anything about fallen down except i saw that that unusual uh, outfit that I guess is the traditional. Uh, it sounds like that was kind of a, you, you were like the only gay person there, right? <laughs> Isn't that basically what it was? Uh, well, it's okay. So it's a very, uh, very, very old village. It's a very old German village. Um, and they are very well known in the Netherlands for being um, a very specific village. They're very mm-hmm. uh, well, sort of not closed off, but they're very like, um, on their own they have a very specific dialect that is not understood or talked um spoken by anybody else in the country so that's quite specific but they're also known for a lot of talent there's a lot of famous singers yes. famous bands um Thank that you. come from that village. so they're very well known for that i wasn't the only gay in the village there were a couple of other homosexuals but i was definitely at that time the youngest that came out so uh, big i was so unapologetic mm. about it yeah um so that also gave me some problems, of course. But then, you know, you also grow up and you 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 learn to deal, and you also realize that you have some, um, you know, crazy behavior that just gets a reaction from people. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's also one of the reasons why I I I decided to wear that costume, which they didn't agree with. But um, it was an original costume that I that I borrowed from the uh, museum in Volodam. So it was oh, an wow. original two hundred year old costume. Yeah, that's really interesting. And then you also. I was interested too when you wore the uh, the outfit from the Roxy. Can you tell me about how how did that come about? I actually, but which one was it? Because yeah, that's where I, the confusion there, was for me. So much confusion right. about the outfit. The outfit that we're actually talking about that was the vintage outfit was the one that I wore in the performance in the medley, uh, and not yeah. the one with the wings. But that's an edit mistake, right? In in the editing from the production, I think. Um, so that um, it was years and years and years ago. It was a couple of years into me doing drag and somebody um, offered that one online for sale. So I went over um, to try it out and I didn't fit it, but I was like, fuck, I need to have this. This is, this is written <laughs> on my body. Like this is my, <laughs> um, and it was actually made by um, uh, Prince Charming, a former duo, two guys who d- used to make clothes. Um, now he's alone and he still does a lot of things for the Eurovision. Uh, oh. Tico Bear's name is, um, 
So he does all the clothing for the toppers, the Eurovision, uh, Gerard Joling. So he's still a really famous uh, couturier in the Netherlands. And um, it's yeah, what he what I what I've explained what he explained to me when I bought it from this guy is that they made it for the Roxy um, in 1994, I believe. Yeah, uh, for the Love Ball that they did there. Um, so for me, there was such a magical feeling around that dress and what it what mm-hmm. it meant for the city and what it meant for gay scene back in the day when I was a babe. I was two years old. Um, mm-hmm. So I uh, I bought it and then I had a couple of inches put in <laughs> <laughs> to be able to fit it. Um, and I've always kept it with me. So I've I've had it for I think seven or eight years now. Interesting. Wow. I actually use. I went to the Roxy a few times in the nineties because I'm I'm a rather old woman and. Uh, Boy, that was probably the strangest club I've ever been to in my life. I, when I was there, they had like a drag queen dressed up like as Tinkerbell, you know, the fairy godmother lady. And she had a guy on a stretcher, like a hospital stretcher that has that you can, you know, flip up and down. Right. So it has two sides, two different people on the same stretcher. Oh, she was <laughs> she ha- she was fisting the guy with a glove on oh. and then made him fingerprint. And I'm sorry if this is too dirty. It's a podcast made him fingerprint with his own shit on stage what? at the Roxy. And it was okay. so you, it was so smelly, I had to go up to the balcony because I couldn't stand the smell. I don't even know why I stayed. It was the weirdest club. Then I heard it burned down when they had a funeral for like the owner or something, right? That they had a funeral. Um, well, something like that, right? I, I'm not sure if the It and the Roxy were the same owner. No. Um, no, I don't think, think so. Yeah, I think the, the, the funeral you're talking about is from Manfred, which was the yeah. It. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's a different club. But it was the same period. Oh. Um, so the, the stories get mixed up a little bit. But I think the <laughs> it eventually burned down. And um, they had a big, big funeral for him. The whole funeral's in pink. The whole oh, city yeah. was pink. Yeah. And he is really one of those pioneers um, mm-hmm. in that time. And, and if, I mean, you know, he, he had the most famous people from all over the world come from that club. I used to love the it. I got my stories mixed up. I used to love the it, too. It was always, like, so exciting to go down there on the weekend because I was living in Eindhoven to go up to the it. And then just the thrill of, like, oh, are they going to let me? Are they going to let me in this time? Are you what? You know, and then. And but the performances that's one thing I always remembered from Holland the the performances that they do in those clubs is is absolutely top notch they would have these coordinated you know people in indian headdresses one week and then another week every every drag queen would be a different teletubby dancing on the on the <laughs> blocks is it still I mean, like that there no no no, I think it's in general, the times are not like that anymore, also because people are just a lot more careful about what we do, yeah. Um, and I miss that sometimes. Like, I've never experienced it, so I'm really jealous of the people telling me all these beautiful yeah. stories yeah. Uh, because I was, I was two years old. Um, so, but I, I do think we have to find that sometimes again, you know? We have to find the, the nerve. We have to show the nerve, you know? Yeah. We, I know we're all being sensitive and um, careful as well, mm-hmm. and of course mm-hmm. we're a lot more woke these days, but we also have to find that nerve, you know? Right. Absolutely, I think so. Sometimes you have to push the push the edge, and you yeah. have to get people to question. And definitely that. with art, though, I think art is the perfect yeah. art and humor is the perfect way to stretch boundaries, but also make a dialogue uh, make a dialogue going. Right. Start the dialogue. I think the only um, the only place where I've seen shows that you're describing with the fisting and everything <laughs> uh, is Wasteland. Oh, is that That's an answer? Awesome. And Wasteland is one of the, I think the, the Netherlands is the second biggest and then G- Germany is still the biggest uh, additions they do. It's an amazingly huge fetish party yeah. uh, where everybody comes dressed in latex and rubber and all that stuff. And you have to be in theme or else you don't get in. And, and they do those type of shows. And I've seen, you know, people like um, with the hooks. Uh, in the body, in the oh. flesh. I saw this oh. performance where they laid a girl down and they put 40 hooks, 20 on each side from nipple to, to knee. And then uh. the girl stepped behind her and played her like a human harp. And oh it was... My God. Oh my God. Know, things where you go, yeah, this is art. I'm but, really visual. It also <laughs> wakes up a vision of like, what is happening. I love, I love it. it. I love it. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't. Ugh. I love but it. But I don't like injection in general. So a hook in, in your body is like... Ugh. <laughs> yeah, it's intense it's very yes. intense. yeah um, i just remember that feeling that it would give you you know just watching all these performers in a club in different locations of the club all like synchronized somehow and everybody was in like the same almost like a tr- you know a, a, an altered state and then mm. the audience and it's just this magical moment that i, I, I really well, 
I mean, you also shouldn't forget that at the time of the It and the Roxy was the invention of ecstasy, right? And th- I, that's yes, that's the subtext. He would hand you one when you walked into the floor. Like, yeah, yeah. Hey, well, <laughs> yes, that is true. That is very true. Maybe that has I mean, something to do with it. <laughs> I guess you know. So, do you have a? Uh, do you have a? Uh, I assume you're a like a, uh, a, a. You identify as a male and all that, right? So you're are you a gay male? You're not, or you're not binary. Yes. Or, and do you have a boyfriend? No. You want one? No, I'm not. Asking, <laughs> no, I, I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking for the audience. Do you? Are you? Are you looking? <laughs> Daddy are you, would be a way to start. Yeah. You're you're interested, or you just out? You're just playing the field, and that's fun. No, I'm I'm definitely interested in love. Um, I mean, I think that's you know a lot of people like when you do drag and we're on stage and all this craziness. But when I'm at home, I'm very cuddly. I love watching Disney movies and hug oh. and food and you know like you know cook and hang out and cuddle and chill and um defo but i also know that with my with the career choice that i have you know if i get a call to go to the us and do a tour tomorrow i'm going you know mm, of course so, uh, it's it's um i also am very aware that if i would have a relationship that you know i have to find a way to balance these things and and um i have it's, doable. Able to, it's so doable let's see what the future brings do you want to my uh, oh yeah I'm sorry Come to on. talk over you, fashion. Do you, are <laughs> oh, you, are, do you want a family? Do you want? To, are you thinking kids, or is, is that something you would just not interested in? Well, re- recently my roommate and I got a puppy, and I'm struggling <laughs> to deal with that. So let's not talk about that. <laughs> <yet. Yeah. laughs> um, I do. Um, if, if I get older and I stop doing drag and all of you know the craziness, and I want to settle down, I would love to settle down and um, be able to take care and have a sanctuary for monkeys. Oh, I think they're very cute. Oh. Yeah, I think they're very, very beautiful, oh. intelligent beings, and very inspiring. And I've always loved them. And of course, I'm you know in Europe and in my country, especially, it's illegal to to keep them or or or, or have a sanctuary. Well, working for uh, Stichting Up would uh, help. That like that one of those things. Like I would love to go into that world and and see what I can do there. So maybe that'll be my family eventually. That's fun. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been to that animal sanctuary? There's one in Alsace where you go up on a mountain and they have all these monkeys and they're all free and you can play with them, kind of. Yeah, Apahil. Yeah, you've been there. Yeah. Oh, oh Apahil. Yeah. That's that's so cool. I love that. I always wonder what do they do in the winter though. Are monkeys cool in the winter in a mountain, or do they have to put them inside? I don't know. No, they they have like both. They have inside and outside. Huh. Well, um, so yeah, it sounds like you're. I, I'm. I'm really interested in like uh, the production aspect of things. Like, um, like how does this all work? Like, when when did you when did you find out that you were going to be on the show, and how did you audition? Like, how did that process work? Uh, well, in the Netherlands, we they already tried to make this show a couple of years ago. I think yeah. two or three years ago, and it didn't work out as well with the rights. And and you know, that's when we already did some um, some like a small audition, like with the questionnaire and uh, all of your information yeah so based on that they called us or me in this case and they were like hi would you like to consider doing it again and i was like yes definitely i would love to um so you update your questionnaire and everything um and then you make an audition video where you uh where i for example i i gave a couple of uh, answers to questions about me and explain a little bit about myself and i showed them a compilation of my previous work um and that is definitely all the stuff that i've done for tv and the stuff i've done miami and mykonos and and uh, all the shows i've been doing in Amsterdam for years and um based on that they invited me for a conversation um in front of camera of course they do an, an interview again um out of drag and then based on that i was uh, casted to do the show so so you do, it sounds like the same audition process as they have here. So you do the video, you do some questions, you sign your life away. And then, uh, <laughs> but in this case, so, but you found out that the show was actually happening, what, in June? Like right before? Uh, no, they, we knew the show was, mm-hmm. well, we knew they were doing the auditions. I think it was like February. Ah, interesting. And yeah. And then also like they, they planned to do the show um, or like filming the show i think it was originally in may halfway may but of course because of covid and everything happening uh everything changed around and they had to make different plans and then everything just got like scooped up to like august i was just thinking how lucky you were and how lucky we as the audience were that you were able to to get the show done at the perfect moment in between lockdowns right 
I mean, um, it, it's really lucky because now everything's locked down again. You you managed to take advantage of that window. Um, yeah. But on the other hand, now that the lockdown is happening, there aren't any shows. And normally when, I, I guess, when the show ends, a lot of bookings take place or during the show even. And that's not happening right now. So there's a downside to all of it, too. True, true. We were very happy that we got to experience some sort of growth this year because we're all at home and stuck and not doing anything. <clears throat> Sorry. And um, so we were already happy with that. But yeah, we're all, you know, now we cannot do what we want to do most. And that is being on stage and traveling and meet our fans and, you know, create beautiful, special moments. But um, good times will come. We'll stay positive. Right. So what do you do in the meantime now? Right now I am chilling. Honey. <laughs> um, also, also because like, you know, the diff the big big difference is which a lot of people d do not understand because of the translation or they just don't know is that in general in the u.s after you film the show they do editing for about six months mm -hmm. and you have this time in between to sort of regroup and to refresh and to you know get right. new, new stuff going and we literally um well especially the girls that did the show till the end um the top four we had two weeks mm before they started doing the promo and then airing the show. Yeah, so, two weeks um, to enjoy your fame before, <laughs> before they live. Oh, two weeks, two weeks yeah. to, to not, and to not do anything or to sleep or to photo shoot because you want to photo, you want to, you know, have photo shoots done of all of your looks you've done in the show. Uh -huh. So I think until the finale aired um, about a week or a week and a half ago, we have been nonstop since, since March, when we started like you know the, the whole process of like i'm going to be in the show so at this point i'm i'm just chilling I'm, i'm i'm relaxing a little bit i'm sleeping i'm i'm regrouping my mind and 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 you know step by step finding so those, out where i want to go with this and how to how to deal with being in lockdown <laughs> yeah. so those photo I'm shoots well. that everybody does that you just mentioned the, i always thought they shoot those when you're doing the actual show that they do they have photographers there and they take photos of your um of your various outfits as you would wear them but that's not true you do the photo shoots after the after the filming on your own oh, you, right? you get photos from the runways like uh -huh. the stuff that we post from the runways yeah. those are made actually during the show when you do your walks they make them as they go yeah um, and then you get your videos of course from world of wonder um but we always prefer to do studio photography oh interesting and it does know. show Because you see the queens who did and who, or maybe all of them did, but you definitely, you and Chelsea Boy, uh, MP and Peru, yeah. uh, th those are the ones that pop into my mind because you had beautiful uh, photoshopped uh, with beautiful backdrops and uh, yeah, very beautiful uh, executions of the photo shoots where and it's all credit to the photographer for real like he, he's it, it's our work of art what's his mm -hmm. name uh rob okay rob jacobs he's the guy uh well i didn't do everything with rob I, i also did some stuff with giovanni um and marielle and max uh in the beginning uh, -huh. uh for my queen b and my alien mm -hmm. and i had those video compilations of, of behind the scenes and stuff um and then also i did a lot with surreal Uh, who just put out Stunning Magazine with a lot of the girls in there and Envy on the cover, of course, that cunt. Which I'm expecting, <laughs> which I'm expecting, Stunning. Yeah. I just got a mail that uh, it's been sent, so I'm open. it's... Arrived. I haven't posted that photo of me in that magazine yet, so you're going to have a little, like, special moment with that one. I'm, I'm waiting with that to post it. Okay. And then um, the last the last compilation of photos I did from like the books and the finale that was with Rob and that is the same photographer that did our naked photo shoot in the show. Ah. And you still have a photo shoot with him, or was that what you did with him right now? Yeah, what I won did, that. Uh, the one that I won, I did the ball. So I asked him okay. to do nine photos for me, which is a really big task for him to do. Oh my god, I loved your naked photo shoot. That was fantastic. Do you know? I, I'll tell you a secret. I freeze framed it, and I, <laughs> I I've. I freeze framed it because you know there was a scene where you could see everything. Did you know that? I mean, I'm a lesbian. Don't worry, I'm not being sexual. Well, I did put a couple of messages where people like we saw a flash of your dick in that. Yeah. And I was like, what? And I was like, and they were like, yeah. And I was like, okay, girl. I'm like, yeah. What's up? 
you know, <laughs> all your best assets, bitch. Well, Let's that's roll. the thing, because you were doing at one point this move where you're flapping that thing back and forth. Of course, you can't see it. But left to the imagination, I thought, I think Janie has quite a bit to work with downstairs. <laughs> but I well, was it the I mean, sound made? Was it the sound that made you think that? It was my imagination. I don't think I heard any flopping, but it was a combination of the movement and Fred's reaction. Because Fred's looking like, oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Well, Fred is also like really awkward with nakedness. Oh, we know really? this. Yeah, he was he was really like sort of being uncomfortable with nakedness, and then. Uh, when I started doing the photos, he's like, oh, you have to hide it a little. And I was like, why? Is, why are we <laughs> naked if we have to hide it? Like, just give us a thong then, you know? <laughs> and then he was like, at one point, I was sitting down with my legs crossed. And he was like, make sure to show you of your best side. And I opened my legs up. Ah! And, like, <laughs> and he died and he was laughing. But yeah, he's sort of great. awkward. But, uh, but yeah, every like also in confessionals, they were trying to get me to say like, you know, like, oh, look at me. I'm a big, big monster, whatever. And I was just like, you know, I'm a healthy Dutch boy, and oh. that's just girl. Okay. You have so. a ma- nice parling. What's a parling? Right. Um, See, these jokes coming up. <laughs> what's a parling? Uh, a mule. mule. <laughs> what? Lul? That's, that's, oh, uh, a lul? Uh, no, the, the fish. <laughs> an eel. Fish. Oh, an fish, eel. eel. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> he's from a uh, 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 fallen dom yeah, is known fish. for their eels. Yeah. Oh, I no see. Parling yeah. pop. Piling pop, piling sounds, yeah. Yes. That was great. Anyway. That was one of my favorite uh, moments of the show. Um, so, <laughs> do you, I'm just curious. You know, like, um, like for the Rusical reminded me a lot of the Rusicals they do in um, in the United States. Do you know, like, was production controlled by the United States, or was that all done in Holland? Like, did they write that in script? I mean, obviously, it's in English, but I'm just wondering, like, how much of that direction and production comes from the U.S.? team versus versus uh, i guess it was an utrecht do you know well i don't i don't know i mean i know that you know of course world of wonder is the is is one of the executive producers of in general drag race so they are in control of of, the, of how the show goes and uh, but i'm not i'm not sure in how like in how far it's divided or whatever but i do know that the rusical has been written by dutch guys uh-huh 100 oh. yeah because they did a uh-huh. really good job of keeping it consistent like the the franchise between the u.s and the Dutch version is very consistent. You know, not all of them are like that. Like the one from Chile is the switch is nothing like d- drag race. So it was nice to, I was just curious if it was the same people behind the scenes. Like, do you know, does RuPaul have anything to do with the production of this or does she just record those messages and she's done? I, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Cause she did not know. sound like she knew envy very well in that congratulatory <laughs> message. She's like, congratulations, envy Peru. Here's my beautiful, you know, backdrop. I from think, motion. That, I think that's also like, you know, it, it just, it becomes a formula and it becomes a brand mm-hmm. and, yeah. and um, it's not, not that you lose touch in it, but it's, yeah, it just becomes a brand, you know? And then, and I mean, girl, you just be happy. I didn't win because she did not know how to pronounce my name as well. Oh, oh really? <laughs> so I'm not the uh, only one. <laughs> so, you know, let's be happy it was envy because <laughs> I would have had to deal with that drama for the rest of my life. And then how did that work? Do you, they filmed the finale where you both had to pretend to win and then you didn't yeah. find out till you watched it air or how did that happen? How did that yeah, unfold? That's the, same, that's the same thing they do in the U S they film uh, multiple winners. Um, and I think in the U S they even film like a tie and everything. And, you know, really? cause it's usually three girls. Yeah. So they film like multiples and then you find out the day they air it. Oh, so it was still a surprise. Yeah, one hundred percent. Oh, that's also why I was like, you know, like until that point of the finale airing, I was still like in this crazy whirlwind of like going on and going on mm. and going on and going on until that point, and that was the point where I was like, okay, now we know, now it's out there, now I need to relax and chill and give my body some space to like deal with everything that has been going on. Yeah, and do they have do they have story producers in the Netherlands too? Like, do you have a producer that tries to? to work with you specifically in developing your story as a character, or does that just not happen there? Well, we we're not part of my, my storytelling or, or yeah. character development. Like I don't have a say in that. Um, I don't think anybody has, but you do have like, um, uh, you know, like the people you do your uh, confessionals with, mm-hmm. they are around you and they take notes and they, you know, look at what's being said. And then they talk with you in confessionals about what happened. And, you know, so that's, I guess those people, create your storyline throughout the show, but you're not in control of that yourself at all. Yeah. Was there, was there sort of like someone in production that you, that you sort of 
related to more or how did that work? Or are you pretty much all just friends with, with the other cast members and you don't really deal with production that much? Um, no, I don't. I mean, yeah, you, you're sort of also because of Corona, we were all together in a group that was safe to be around with. And the mm-hmm. production was like all like on distance and they had mouth mask and they had to be like careful. So you're very much in the group with the girls together and they sort of overview you and they, you know, they, they make sure everything goes well. And yet when you have to go left or have to go right, they tell you what to do. But um it's not like, you know, you don't talk about the production or how the show goes or what they expect from you or what's going to happen the next day. You know, it's it's all a surprise until the day you, you're there and it happens. So you're really in a fishbowl. And in some ways, maybe yeah. that's why it's that why you guys all work so well together as a cast, because it really that is the effect we get. Yeah. Plus, also, like, you know, it, in the U.S., they fly you out from different states. Right. We need the girls here here we know a lot of girls like i didn't know two of the girls personally but other than that i know all the girls you know and and some of them i've been working with for years Mm -hmm. um like like we said also like uh, envy said in the in a beautiful conversation in the finale she knew me before she did drag i was already on stage um Mm -hmm. so you know that i think that also creates a different dynamic you know a lot of the girls already love each other or know each other work together are big fans of each other appreciate respect each other so much and in the U.S., you notice that the girls, they have to get to know each other first, and then you see these beautiful friendships develop. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. And it seems like in the U.S., they, the, the, the drag scenes per uh, uh, state are really different. True. And maybe that's less different here because we're a smaller country or a very small country, and uh, everything is, well, that doesn't necessarily mean everything's the same, but... Uh, I don't know why. Well, I mean, I you know, it's like me and Matt we work in the same city and we do a very different type of drag, mm-hmm. you know? So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it is not necessarily divided by states or provinces or whatever, but it, it, it yeah, it, it's just, um, it's just a very small country. Like North to South is two and a half hours by car, you know? Yeah. Um, different world. So you mentioned that uh, two of the girls you didn't know personally, yes. who were the, the, they? Uh, that was Room and Mama mm-hmm. Queen. Oh, Mama Queen. Okay. Yeah, so I followed Room on Instagram already for a while before Drag Race because I, I just, you know, like I loved how she um, did that uh, RuPaul Dark Race on yeah. Twitter mm-hmm. and stuff. And she was known for that. So I followed her already for a while. And I've seen Mama Queen do uh, performances with her house, the House of Holographic Hosts, mm-hmm. on uh, Super Bowl, which, of course, I'm, I'm part of the family because I won um, two titles there. Um, so I've seen her do the performance and that's when I started following her because I was so impressed with her house and, and what they did there. Um, but I ne- never met her. So on the, on the show was the first time I actually met her in real life. She's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, 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 the diversity of that cast is amazing. Are there, are there a lot of black drag queens that you've worked with in, um, in Amsterdam? Cause I'm curious, cause we, there was, there was obviously a couple of Queens of color. I have to be careful in my language here, but didn't a lot of people were surprised that there weren't any black Queens, let's say from Suriname. Are there, are they just not on the scene in, in, in Amsterdam or how did you, any idea why that's the case? No, they are on the scene. Definitely. Um, uh, there's, a, yeah, I've worked with a lot of them. Um, but I, I did the thing is, and that's so, kind of hard to like point out did they audition or did they not audition i think there's also a really big group of queens in the netherlands that i've spoken to that were really uh how to say that weary a little bit of like doing mm. a they mm-hmm. were like not sure that doesn't mean necessarily black queens but also just other queens that i know they were like oh i don't want to do a first season i don't know what's going to work out that well dutch tv is always a little mm-hmm. bit different um so they were you know True. not necessarily scared but a little bit wary of doing the first season so i yeah. mm-hmm. don't think that we should be looking at like oh they didn't cast black queens uh-huh. no i'm not, i'm not sure if a lot of queens actually audition also there's also a lot of queens that don't necessarily do this as a 100 percent professional job or a full-time job to say that they do it uh to express themselves but they do it next to their job or just for fun um so i was a little bit disappointed when the promo went out and that conversation came up so quickly yeah. because i was like there's a lot of diversity in the cast that doesn't necessarily have to do with skin color True. Um, mm-hmm. it's, Gender. it's about yeah, it's about like the non-binary side and mm-hmm. then we had a bearded queen, which is the first time ever. Um, and then we had beautiful Peruvian queen, a beautiful Brazilian queen. So 
you know, it was a little frustrating that that came up so quickly because it felt like we didn't cast them just because we didn't want to cast them. Right. And plus, you know, it's in the time of Black Lives Matter is coming up. But also you have to realize that the the name, the namesake of RuPaul's Drag Race is herself black. So it's highly unlikely that she would discriminate against uh, black <laughs> yeah. people, you know. Right. And I, and I think that's one of those things that um, I saw online and I try not to get too much into whole discussion but sure they were like oh so they don't have the opportunities for black queens in the netherlands to do this and why is there no opportunity created and then it frustrated me because i was like babe listen like you said rupaul herself is black and then you know that's where i came from so she would never discriminate but also the first couple of winners of drag race have been black queens oh, yeah. you know yeah. so so the, the discussion of like there's no opportunity for me was really like oh girl that is not true that is not what we sh- should be worried about about that's definitely not happening it's also a choice of queens themselves if they want to be in the show or not well and i if think they- one of the most famous for me anyway the most famous uh drag queens of holland uh who was a judge on the travesty show that uh, ran in uh the 90s was nikki nicole and she was a stunning black woman yeah she or- still is Queen. she still is <laughs> yeah i mean she doesn't do that much any, that that much in, in the scene anymore but she pops up from time to time especially for the roxy and the Ed revival uh mm-hmm. party. but yeah she is one of those queens that is the pioneer of what drag is in the netherlands with the yes. show and and everything that came after and the havana and the Regulis and the exit mm-hmm. and the april and so yeah well plus the proof is in the pudding because in the end the dutch show the dutch drag show or drag race chose somebody who wasn't born in Holland chose a Peruvian to be the, uh, the queen. So that's, that's in itself is a, is a statement of open-mindedness. I think of the whole, the whole country, really, you know, you're, you have, yeah. a, you have, a, you have a queen who is from um, Argentina, Argentina and you've got, yep. uh, you know, the drag queen who is from Peru, both South American. I think, I think it's great. I mean, that's, 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 that's the proof. I mean, anyway, um, I want to know. So you, you won Miss Fish in 2013, yeah. and Envy won it. What in 2019 was it? Or seven? Well, I won. I won a small local competition in oh. 2013, and then I won the Super Bowl, which is now known as an as an uh, a European or more international um, Battle of the Houses in 2015. And that title that I won the first one, and then the the same title Envy won in 2017. Ah, I see. So. How are you? Here's what my question is. You, to me, you were the fishiest of all the queens, mm-hmm. uh, which means, and I don't know if that's politically incorrect. I'm a disaster for political correctness. Just forget about it with me. But you're the you're the fishiest, meaning you you look most authentically like a female. Do you do that on purpose, or how how does that happen? Because as a man, you look like a normal, a, a good looking, you know, masculine man. So how do you convert into a drag queen who looks so much like an, a, a woman? Is that intentional or is that just the way it works because your bone structure? Well, honey, I just woke up like that. (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, and that's also, it's funny because I talked about it with Envy as well, because to me, Envy is also just this perfect woman. But she also told me, she's like, yeah, but I'm more sort of a cartoon character version Mm -hmm. of one. And and I'm not. So for me. Jessica Rabbit comes to mind when, especially when she has the red lips. I'm like, oh, Jessica Rabbit. Exactly. So for me, fish means uh, most convincing. Yes. You know, most convincing girl as boy in drag. I agree. Um, and not everybody in the world agrees with that nowadays, but I, that's just how I feel. And, and I love that. And I'm very proud of that title. And I, uh, gosh, I don't know. I think for me, that female aesthetic and especially the illusion of the transformation mm-hmm. has always been very um, interesting to me. And I've always loved playing around with that. And that's also something I found out when I started doing drag and my drag mama had this party in a club uh, for especially young gay people um, or, or queer and, and lesbian and everybody is welcome. Of course I st- you know, when it was a little dark in the club and the boys were really confused, um, oh. that was such a fun thing to play around with. Yeah. Of course, I don't. I shouldn't open my mouth because the illusion is ruined. But <laughs> well, well, but uh, yeah, I just love playing around with that. And then you know, I wouldn't describe myself as masculine when I'm yeah. out of drag. Um, I always tell myself I'm just me and I'm relaxed and I'm boyish. Uh-huh. Um, I you know, but I'm also girly. You know, like I'm okay. twin. 
like I, I describe myself as a twink because, and that's something that, you know, we forget nowadays because, it, you know, people right. don't seem to like that word. It's that level of like, you can be boyish, but girlish at, in, in, in one body. Um, you know, I, a, a, in my yeah. normal daily life as Justin, not on the show, obviously, but outside of drag race, I have acrylic nails uh, because I'm very into that and I'm very into that art and it just makes my drag a lot better and a lot easier and faster. So I don't, yeah, I just always loved playing around with that illusion. Interesting. Yeah. The, it, and then, so some, some drag queens, they have a personality, like a character that's their drag. Is, is Janie Jacquet a character or is Janie Jacquet just Justin in drag like is there a separation between the two are you different is your personality different when you're in drag in some way i didn't i didn't create a character that has like a different hobby and a different age and it's from you know different time period um i i am yeah it's it's basically uh they overlap each other very much except for the fact that i look female or male and um i guess janie is a little bit more uh crazy i guess but at the same time, I'm not. It's basically the same with the different. So how does that work? Because you work very closely with Cedergene. I know we travel together and all that sort of thing. So how does that work? Because she's clearly the the char- She clearly has a character that's not her. Does that? How does that work when when she has this sort of separation of of character and and you don't? How how is that working together? That never becomes like a, a an issue on stage. Oh no, never. No, I mean I, I totally understand. Uh, what her character is and why it works so well also because she does comedy and you know she she can really rely on on what her character brings to the stage uh-huh. and um, it just works really well together like sometimes when people ask us to explain what we do we always say like oh it's the beauty and the beast um, <laughs> oh, that's so mean <laughs> wow kind wow. of true you know we say it ourselves and that is why we can own it that's um, funny but, well, maybe your uh, Two Faced uh, was a bit of a beast, but yeah. Well, I mean, I think that contrast worked really well. Yeah, but you know what? You're both gorgeous as men, so maybe you know. Uh, well, this is my opinion anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is great. You know, we we have we. Um, I don't know. Do you have any more questions? I, I could go on forever, but I want to keep it under an hour so I can fit it on Instagram. You know, they only let you put an hour on this stupid thing. Um, I, I, I oh, I have one question I really want to ask. So, what could you have done differently that would have given you the win over Envy? Any any idea, or there's nothing you would change? Um, I don't want to think about it that way okay. because then I would just like go and and find um, things in myself that I'm going to be like, oh, I should have done this differently. I should have changed. Uh-huh. That. Be, and, and you know it, it, there's no parallel universe to that but that would have been mm-hmm. perfect for me to win um yeah. eventually she won four challenges and then she won the finale and you know and she worked so hard and she really deserves it right. did i deserve it? well of course i did but um i am very proud of what i've done and i don't regret anything and i it's, it's, yeah i don't think it's that is a healthy way of looking at what you've done in the past um, it's better just to look at the future and the future for me would be like, how would I do things differently or how would I do, how would I do my game on all stars? Oh yeah. We so would love to see you on all stars. Yeah. <laughs> so you think there might be an all stars, um, international or something like that? And I hope I've so. heard rumors, but I don't know if any of them are true and I don't know which ones we started. <laughs> I've seen the rumors, but I do hope they, they're going to make that happen and then they will love to in- invite me and have me on that show oh you'd be great you'd be yes. great on that show i think you and abby in particular would be great because uh, you're so feisty do you think that has any influence on like how lo- longevity of a show because it does seem like the people who are the most i don't know interesting Global. interesting people of you know on the in the in the confessionals and that sort of thing tend to stay longer is that just purely accidental or do you think there's some some guidance from production that makes that happen i really don't know i don't yeah. think i don't think that it's uh based on how you are in confessionals or how they can put you away in the show that it that it means you're going to stay longer or not yeah um because also Sergine had some really interesting confessionals and, and mm-hmm. really fun stuff but she just fucked up that one week and they decided right. it, were, it was where to go so i don't think that is um i think it uh, you know, once you get eliminated and they start editing, then it's, that's when they make decisions of how much they're going to put in of you and how much confessionals they're going to use and, you know, I what's see. good or what's not good to use. Yeah. Sometimes it's like reverse engineering. Well, 
Thank you so much for uh, Janie for coming on here. You've been fantastic. Your cast was fantastic. You entertained the hell out of us, and uh, I I look forward to seeing much more of you. I can't wait to see what you what you bring to us, and I hope you come to Chicago someday, and uh, we can see you in person. Well, thank you so much for having me. I love talking to you. I could continue talking for another hour, <laughs> but unfortunately, we have to uh, stop talking. But definitely, I'm going to come to the U.S., and I'll keep you posted, of course, on every uh, opportunity that's going to come to come see me and meet you guys. And thank I can't wait. Thank you so much. And again, thank you. And, and good luck with you, to you. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> 